CataractCoach.com. Go from this to that. Combine removal of a phagic IOL and cataract surgery with implantation of a toric lens. So we'll make our main incision here with a diamond keratome. You can see this patient has a phagic IOL in the posterior chamber. The patient had this surgery more than 10 years ago, and it served her very well for many years. But at this point, that phagic IOL is touching the anterior lens capsule, and you can see it's causing a very large central opacity, and that's really obscuring the vision and causing difficulties with day-to-day -day tasks such as computer, paperwork, and driving. We're gonna lift up the lens and we're gonna inject dispersive viscoelastic underneath the phagic IOL. Important that you don't damage the anterior lens capsule. So nice and easy with that. And we'll lift this lens out of the capsule uh, touch area. And now we'll use more of this viscoelastic and really free it and get it out of the sulcus area. So there we have our phagic IOL, viscoelastic above it and beneath it. Now we can simply grab it with specialized forceps. And because the lens is so thin, if we pull it straight out, it'll fold on itself and we can take it out intact. There's the entire lens completely intact. So that was easy enough. We're ready for a cataract surgery. Of course, for a toric lens, we want a nice round capsorexis of about five millimeters in diameter. And we'll tear that here. Now, when we come across to that big white opacity, it may be fibrous. So this part of the capsorex is relatively easy. But we come to that opacity, we have to make sure that the rexus proceeds normally. And there'll be a little bit extra resistance because of the opacity, but we're able to complete it. And you can see the back side of that anterior lens capsule has a lot of that wide opacity to it. So we have a very nice rexus there. That looks great. Now this patient's on the young side, so we'll do hydro dissection and get this lens nucleus out of the capsular bag. Not much phaco energy is needed because the lens is soft because of the patient's young age. So a little bit more hydro dissection. There's the nucleus out of the capsular bag. We'll use the phaco probe to emulsify it and it should go down pretty quickly. Now important, these patients are also very myopic. That's why they have the phagic eye well in the first place. So important that you use a modern method like we've described at IOLcalc.com in order to do accurate lens calculations. Now the question is, do you need to take into account the phagic eye well for the calculations? And the answer is no, because we're removing it in its entirety. And when we measure the axial length of the eye, we're using an optical method of measuring it. And because the phagic eye wall is totally clear, we're able to measure through it very easily. So the lens nucleus is completely removed. That went beautifully. We'll adjust our light here to bring out the red reflex a little bit more. And now we're ready for the IA probe to remove the cortex. So taking our time here, we'll do a nice gentle job, remove all this lens cortex, and clean up the capsule bag nicely. Now, what we will do for this patient in terms of IOLs, this patient has a large degree of myopia, which we'll certainly address. And the patient has about two diopters of corneal astigmatism, which we can effectively treat with a toric IOL. So if you look carefully on the left and right sides of your screen at approximately the patient's 12 and 6 o'clock, because remember, we're operating temporally, you'll see marks on the cornea. And we've pre-placed those marks to delineate the steep axis of astigmatism. So now the cortex is removed. We're going to polish up the capsule bag, get everything just nice and clean and ready for IOL implantation. This looks great. We'll go in all meridians. And again, those are the toric lens markings that you see on either side of the IA probe. And once this is cleaned up, let's fill our capsule bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. And you'll see we have a beautifully made round capsulorexis that's just about perfect. And it's very well centered with respect to those Purkinje reflections and it's the appropriate diameter. Here comes our IOL. We'll place that in the capsule bag. It's been preloaded by my technician. So nice and easy, deliver the IOL. 
and then it will unfold it in the capture bag. Now we've discussed many times in the past how to do calculations for torque lens. And in addition, we've also talked about how do you rotate the torque lens. And so remember, this lens itself rotates best clockwise. So we'll rotate it clockwise, and we'll dial it just a little bit short of where we want it. And then after we remove all the viscoelastic, then we can reposition the lens at the perfect alignment. So behind the lens, very important, remove all this viscoelastic because if you leave viscoelastic here, that can allow the lens to slip and that'll change its toric or stigmatism correction. And we don't want that. So in order to achieve lens stability, you must go behind the optic and remove that viscoelastic like we did here. That looks great. And now we're ready to get our chopper in the eye, our second instrument. And what we're going to do is we'll rotate that lens into its final position. So we have our foot pedal on position one, just irrigating. And now we'll use this chopper to gently nudge the lens. And we just simply have to line up the lens. The lens itself has those three dots for toric marking. And we'll line those up with the three dots that we placed on the cornea previously. And that will give us perfect alignment. So again, we're just confirming alignment. That looks great. I like the way that's sitting inside the eye. We can nudge it one way or the other just to dial it in even more so. And then we'll seal up the incisions here at the end. And while we're sealing the incisions, we can also use balanced salt solution on a blunt 27 gauge cannula to further adjust it. So here, I'm just tweaking it to get it exactly spot on. This patient actually saw better than 2020 the very next morning. So certainly our calculations, our surgery, and the positioning of this lens were spot on accurate. So that looks great. Let's seal up the incisions here with some balanced salt solution. So I'll go back and forth, seal that incision very nicely. Don't do excessive hydration because that'll change the shape of the cornea and induce some temporary stigmatism. We don't want that. So we did just the right amount of hydration, just enough to seal the incision. Now we'll go through the side port and we can seal that as well, readjust the lens position if needed and get the intraocular pressure at a normal physiologic level. So a little bit of sweep here, sweep here at the angle to ensure that no viscoelastic remains. And if you look at that overlap, boy, that is spot on perfect. Beautiful overlap, 360 degrees around the optic by that capsurexis. Torque lens in perfect position. Incisions are sealed up. We are done with this case, and we are happy to congratulate the patient for a beautiful visual outcome the next day. And of course, we take pride in our work for delivering our very best. Thank you for watching.